Hi, I'm Jason from Carbon Kid and I'm one of this year's mentors for the Wellington Trend Vision Award. I'm working on the Colour Artist of the Year category and this is the look I'm going to create for you today in a step-by-step -step motion. Okay, so we want to kind of create a, a character within Esty's hair that kind of really symbolises like current movements and trends. Um, Emphasis in a lot on texture and bringing out all this textural shape that's in the hair. And we're going to do that by using a combination of colours, which we've made predominantly from using um, Colliston Me Plus, but intermixing stuff so it's a little bit more erratic. Um, not going down that route of making it clean and precise as the colour would be normally if you use the mixture on its own or singularly. So we want to kind of create textual shapes that have a pushing motion to them. So using angles and triangular shapes to create this. And then being influenced a little bit by current movements away from certain trends. So more richness and deepness in colours, so they have a bit more of a well-travelled vibe to them. And to do this, we can kind of work a very angular shape into the hair that we've pre-cleansed already, so that it gives us an uneven base, which is kind of the best base to work on, I feel, because it gives you a bit more personality. So not looking for perfection, because perfection is never perfection anyway. It always looks much better when it's slightly raw. And then we can kind of showcase a lot more of the product as well. We want like, the hair to look rich and shiny, obviously, but we also want it to have a kind of a tonic feel to it. Uh, this is why I pre-cleanse the hair very gently, but unevenly, so that we can create this lightness through different areas, almost mottled effect. So moving around the head, creating one giant section to start with, and this is to map out where we want to direct our hair. And I think mapping out is a really important way to kind of sense the head shape, the density, the mass of the hair. So just to remove the bulk to start with, and then we'll clean up our section and make it a lot more strong. But there's a lot to be said about where you put hair and where you move it to in terms of how it's gonna look at the end. So a mass section can give us a very nice overview of how we want the hair to look. Uh, and in this case, Esty's got a lot of hair. So it makes sense to prime the hair. So we actually primed it yesterday with a leave-in conditioner. So we did that with service. So we actually left it in a little bit. And I know it's kind of against the norm, but actually it's not going to cause a barrier in her hair because her hair's porous. But what it does is actually make it easier for us to colour. So again, imperfection, creating an overall image. Okay, so this section is also going to sit slightly irregular, offbeat. So offbeat giving us a little bit more of a quirky view on how we want it to sit. a lot of hair to kind of work through. So I think eliminating the bits we don't need to work with first is always a good idea. And then trying to kind of visualize the balance of colors. So we're working with a color palette of three. And working in regular numbers or odd numbers 
actually works better or is a little bit more of a fail safe in my eyes. Um, if you work like with odd numbers, you can actually build on the whole process of what uh, florists use, architects and whatnot. Working with odd numbers gives you a slightly more safe zone. Okay, so section in the hair, downsides as well to create a radial section in the hair. So ear to ear on say both sides will then help us to work the first colour into the hair, which we're going to work a deeper root. So we're going to start with a base root of 5 stroke 07, Collison Perfect Me Plus. And then we've just worked with 10 grams to 30 with 0 stroke 65. So adding a little bit of mixed tone in there and 6%. And then that just quirks up the base tone. So you're not going for a classic 5 stroke 07 you're going to get a little bit of a hue come through. And then when you're working over different textures, different light and bases, you're going to get different colour results. So for my mapping out, I'm going to add other tones into the hair as well. So second colour, worked a little bit of five stroke, six five, ten grams to be exact, into 30 grams of 10 stroke 61. Sorry, 10 stroke 1 6. So I'm making my own colours up now. Hopefully it'll look like a 10 stroke 61. Okay, and then overlapping in places as well. And then this what gives it a little bit more of a, a forward thinking vibe to it because you're not trying to get that clean classic result but what it will do for us is really pick up on all those accents that we've got moving through so we're going to go through stain all the roots through the back and then work it all in a upward motion up and away from the face Okay, and if we stretch away as well, it actually makes application much quicker. We can see what we've got and what we don't need. So for the majority of this back part, I'm just going to work with our depth. So Formula One. And kind of get those nice rouge browns. So it's almost, it can border on being maroon. Okay, and then using the neck to work almost like a board so we can actually mould the colour into the hair. And then we can isolate that area if we need to because the root as we stretch it down is actually darker so we don't need to worry about that blending into anything else but if we want to change the top area we can just change it by isolating it slightly so just using colour wrap which we've cut to precision to fit the shape and that allows us to go back to this area at any point and then we can change the density of the colour that we're working through here by reverting back to the maroon. And the colour wrap itself then just moulds into the hairline. I think with anything it's really good to experiment. I think especially with a new portfolio of colours that are obviously been redesigned to bring out the best in everything. So pure colour balance. You know, that technology enables us to be a bit more creative. Given any age. 
but especially for a model entering into competition circuit such as TVA where you kind of like need to think about the aesthetic it's quite easy to use the most popular color on the market but then bearing in mind that 16,000 other people have probably done the same so it's always a bit more quirky if you try and work it in a different way or think about it from a different perspective we've got the majority of our roots plastered in now we can leave that to slightly oxidise, leaving that length and ends through there, and then we can come back to that area once we've worked our primitive area in. Okay, so hairline, moving straight into the hairline, changing our root formula on the top to work predominantly this really nice rougey tone. So we're mixing our rouges into blondes to create our own metallics or rose tinted tone. And we can kind of get a vibe that the colours were a little bit more vintage. And I like the idea of that it looks like we've applied a colour to a model's hair and they left her sitting in a shop window for too long and then the colours just faded over time. And then you create this new tone. And that can be achieved as well by changing up the oxidant. So we've worked with 9% through here. Specifically, so that we don't darken the hair and the five straight six, five doesn't take over. Uh, stretching the hair around in different ways as well helps create a better balance. I think the more we manipulate the hair, the better the result. I've always been one of those people, if I'm told not to do something, I will do it anyway to, to see what happens. I think there's a logic, there's always a logic scientifically in why you don't do something. So obviously as long as you're not like putting it in her eyes or anything, it should be fine. But experimentation is actually very good. And especially for competitions as well, it's the time to push. Okay, so we use the product almost like a, a sectioning tool as well keeps the hair away from the face. Simple comb and a simple brush. And then just use the end of the brush to feather in any detail or hair. Okay, so that area then starts to bring itself into the back. Okay, and then instead of the classic repeat yourself on the other side, it's always better to then work opposite direction. So it's almost like you're wrapping the hair and wrapping is kind of a very <coughs> important thing in editorial hairstyling. Wrap blow drying, wraps to put wigs over. So you can kind of pick up like tricks and tools from any thing you've experienced in the past. Nice to work with a lot of amazing styling people in the editorial world. So I'm changing my colour formula a little bit, working in to formula number one to so create more of that maroon again. Okay. 
So that's all the back perimeter root area put in. We can just stretch that up and then create our texture from the length. By blending and stretching everything together, that's what starts to give it its character. I think it'll be really nice to see the usage of deeper tones in trend vision in some areas, because there's such an amazing range of colors to use. Just our model around a little bit now. Enables us to start looking a little bit at what's going on through here. And again, stretching it down, flattening it. And then working our third tone into the hair. Okay, so working a sheer tone this time. So a sheer beige, working with an 895 with 065 mixed in slightly. So if you notice I'm using the same kind of corresponding tones, six five, bass fives and levels of eight and 10, but they all have that same characteristic in there somewhere. So that's because I'm thinking about the overall appearance. So my back area gets painted in, worked freehand to start with, stretched down, working it into the previous tone. And that's just to emulate and eliminate, sorry, a lot of lightness. So what we will do is once we've completed everything, we will also tone at the basin to give the colour an overall top coat. I think kind of putting top coats over colours is kind of a real nice finishing tool. We can then look at our areas through here and then start working a contrast to our previous root colour. So by not covering the hair and looking at what we've already done, it actually speeds the process up. I'm working my depth into my top shape, which is sitting offbeat, as we said. So it's got an irregular vibe all the way around to correspond with the way the hair moves. Okay, so I'm gonna work the opposite direction through this area. thinking exactly about what I want to see through here. So in a colour category for TBA, obviously, as I said, there's going to be an overview of image, makeup, aesthetic, but then the main marks are made up through colour choice, application, technique, and so on and so forth. So the more interesting the input is, the more you're responding to the actual aesthetic of the competition. So that doesn't mean you have to write an essay of 6,000 words what you did, but if you can actually showcase it in a picture with fewer words, it will tell the story much better. There's a lot of hair there. <coughs> I'm just going to over direct this front section back a little bit through here just to allow for the mass density that she has got. And 
I always think there's like nothing better than um, sat more satisfying even than colouring someone's hair. Especially when you get to play around a little bit more. And for that kind of trust element as well. Right, so now we start to flood back into our fuchsia tones. I think mixing depths of five into depths of ten that have got corresponding tones or near total tone um, just makes the whole mixture more interesting. Pop your head back. Okay, so classically overlapping stuff, which if you apply first, uh, leave it to develop slightly, you can go back and manipulate it. We've got that nice rouge root starting to appear through there, so we can clash against that with our depth. So going back to the browns, creating this bougie kind of effect in the hair, stretching it away in different direction. And then the last section, through that top area will enable us then to elevate the hair up and do the lengths and then. So we're seeing a bit more of a return to rustic tones or well-travelled colours. So colours have got a little bit more of a heritage to them. Um, anything born out of that kind of has warmth, depth, woody, berry light tones to it. And then the manipulation comes from the use of intermixing peroxide strength and whatnot and the other. Just twist you around. Okay, so that shape has formed a really nice angular Okay, and this is then the time to direct everything into the middle, then start working some texture back through these sections. So just working slightly more uneven, taking each section in the large area, stretching it down, reapplying our root colour to start. And then just using my hand as a palette, I'm going to work with our two lightest tones, one being on the level of a 10, sorry, level of an 8, so you get that sheerness to it. But the 065 helps it drop down, creates more of an ice cream tone. Okay, so for that first area, we'll just isolate the bottom part of the wire. Okay, and then everything else will be directed onto that. As I said, large sections. Using our hand as our palette. And then the good thing about working like this as well is that we can use any remaining colour to surface over everything to create that top coat. So I'm directing everything by pivoting around. Uh, kind of going back to old school ways of like sectioning where we always use the crown to pivot around, especially for perming. So perming influencing colour uh, reduces creativity. And 
and then just starting to move it, lowering it down on the pivot as well. Make sure we really elevate it. So and in this case, deciding to use mesh to just determine where things are. Taking really, really large section. And then what I like to do as well as with anything kind of in the creative zone is to rinse everything together and emulsify it. So again, it creates a seamless blend. Again, stretching everything back in the way. You start to get that wood-like effect in the hair, rosewood, which is um, a nice tap into trends. Yeah. So details. That red tone, the rouge is starting to pop through on there now, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. Okay, so it just leaves the remaining hair just slightly through this length and then. So this will be a definite area that we'll use some sort of top coat in at the basin area. But I don't actually want to lose too much of the previous tone that we had in there, but actually revamp it. So pastelizing it or mattifying it by using a denser product over the surface. And then when it comes to toning the hair, we're gonna use our remaining mixture with 5565-1016. Retone this really delicately through the back area. So that's a way of creatively working with color. And Kind of like ways we want to see things worked in the colour category. A little bit more usage of products, being a bit more diverse, and in this case we're using only Colliston Perfect Blue. And then we're done. So here's the look we created for um, Transition Ward. So we look, looking at it from a mental point of view, a character that I would create. Um, infusing colour, texture, we're working in that colour category. So we really want to kind of put lots of elements in there. And um, thinking about our product placement, products that we use to create our final look. And then the overall styling, including breaking with our makeup artists, the clothes we wear, and then just picking up accents to create total look. So we're mirroring what we have in outfits into the hair in some point and then also into the makeup. So Total Look is a complete way to go and it kind of finalizes everything. So all the elements that you want to see in there, you should be able to inject or project onto your model. Um, I've really liked working on this technique and being able to manipulate the color around the way I want it and then 